right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Tracy Litt, who is in Palm Beach, Florida. How are you doing, Tracy? I'm wonderful. How are you? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Tracy is the author, celebrated author of the book Worthy Humans, a book featured as a bestseller on Amazon and in major media outlets, uh, such as Thrive Global, Entrepreneur Inc. and Fast Company. She has been praised for her outstanding TEDx talk, and her impact is undeniable. And you say, if if Brand Brown and Tony Robbins had a baby, it would be Tracy Litt. So there we are. We have a, we have the offspring here today, yes. <laughs> which is great. And what we're going to talk about is becoming the next level uh, of yourself. Okay, so so Tracy, um, let's just baseline it right now. Is so a lot of people are stuck. I would say, right? A lot of people, you know, get into a rut, get stuck. Maybe they default into a career or a life or whatever, and they just kind of go with it because those are the expectations they think are set for them. And this is the, this is the, the limitations around themselves. So how, how do people, number one, recognize that perhaps there is another level to go to? Um, well, you have to be willing. That's the first thing, right? Um, the skepticism and your inability to decide differently will always be a block, right? So the first thing is being willing and recognizing that I can change, right? We all can. And this isn't, you know, just my ideas on life mm -hmm. um, and up leveling. This is science. This is what we've learned through neuroplasticity. This is, you know, the truth of as spiritual beings having human experience, we have a depth and breadth of inner power that when we are taught how to utilize it and practice it, it can always lead you to the transformation you desire. Yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, so how do, I mean, part of it is that, uh, I mean, you say, you know, that we lie to ourselves, the great lie of unworthiness, right? Yeah. So how, how do you overcome that? Because obviously, we're we're fantastic at talking negatively to ourselves. We're fantastic at at finding evidence of why we're where we are and why we don't deserve other things. So how do you, how do you overcome that? Mm. So we don't overcome. We move through. That's the first mm -hmm. thing. Anytime we what we resist persists. That's an old personal growth adage, right? And anytime we try to overcome or persevere or push through, we actually make uh, what's against us more pervasive and louder. So instead, we love, we heal, and we move through. Uh, and the, the, the I'm not enough game that you continue to play is what perpetuates you looking for the evidence to support, see, I told you I'm not enough. See, I told you I suck. See, I told you I'm not as good at sales as the next person. So what we do is we go back into your childhood. We must, it, it is part of the work to recognize and tell that little boy or little girl the truth. Because what happens naturally when we are younger is a situation occurs and instantly our meaning maker as a child always infuses it with some iteration of, I'm not enough, I don't matter, I'm not significant. And then we hold that belief until we're a gorgeous grown human and we recognize I'm not where I want to be. I don't feel how I want to feel. And no matter what strategy I try, I'm still hitting a wall. So we start by going back and healing that little boy or little girl and letting them know the truth and giving them a new belief. Uh, and I know that's uh, it's fascinating because I think it's amazing how much stuff we do carry back, uh, carry from back then. And the triggers, as you said, I mean, it can just happen instantaneously without you even noticing. You can be in a situation and something, somebody can say something or look or whatever, and it triggers something from way, way back that you don't, um, you know, that you don't immediately recognize. So, I mean, obviously, as you said, going back and recognizing the triggers or what set up those core beliefs in the first place is, is critical. Yes, it absolutely is. And your willingness to take a look at it 
and know that it's safe to do so. And you're not reliving this. It's data points, you guys. You, it's, it's recognizing like ultimately part of your ability to get to where you want to go in sales, in wealth, in relationships, in health and wellness, in how you spend the hours of your day feeling is all based in you knowing that you are safe and that you have what it takes to make those changes, right? And allowing yourself to know, I get to look at it non-judgmentally. Mm -hmm. So it's a data point to look back and go, oh, isn't it interesting that when I didn't make that soccer team, when I was seven, I made a decision that day that I wasn't enough and I was never going to be enough right? Not to go back and I can't believe I thought that or what was I thinking mm -hmm. or I suck or no, like that's, that is low level consciousness. I want you to go back there going, what are the data points? Give me the data, give me the data so that I can change it and create a new result. Yeah. And uh, uh, what's fascinating to me is so we live in a culture today a pervasive culture that almost, uh, doesn't want you to spend any time with yourself to any time on reflection, any time in quiet, alone time, any time in self-awareness. You're constantly surrounded by distractions and and everything happening and instant gratification. So it's almost like the word it's almost like the you know the culture is is almost against you spending any time on retrospection. Absolutely. And it's that exact culture and the patriarchy and the society that we've all been brought up in. I, I talk about it like we've all been pushed down the same lazy river in the same direction, right? Um, and it's that exact paradigm that has landed us as a people where we are. Um, and, you know, because what happens when you slow down? Well, if you're still working off of I'm as good as what I do, right? I'm as valuable as what I produce, which is why you're like a chicken with your head cut off, thinking that someone's going to give you a badge of honor for your stress and your overwhelm. That's the unfortunate world that we've been brought up in. And we have the opportunity at this crossroads. I believe we're in a consciousness revolution, John, like right now, this is, it's time. If COVID didn't wake you up, I have no idea what you're waiting for. <laughs> Right. Like that was, that was like, that was the personal growth journey that nobody signed up for, but everybody got. Yeah, no, I hundred couldn't agree with you more. And I think that, uh, as as you just said, I think that if 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 COVID didn't give you the opportunity or you know put it straight in front of your face, that now is the time to to reflect and to to do some self awareness and just just take stock take stock of everything. And that's why I think sometimes it's like I, I hear all the time, right? People say, "Oh, you know, we're busier than we've ever been. I'm busier than I've ever been." And I always say, "Are you though? Are you busier than you've ever been, or are you more distracted than you've ever been?" Because I think we live in a highly distracted culture as well, and you have to make a conscious decision to put aside the distractions and actually look at what's important. Absolutely, and to break the habit of feeling like the more you do, the more worthy you are, right? And that your to-do lists need to-do lists and allow yourself to know that it's safe to feel the feelings that you've been suppressing and allow yourself to believe that relax is in fact not wasted time. It's exactly the spaciousness that we need and deserve to become the next level versions of ourselves because the next level version of ourselves are not these frenetic maniacs running around, right? We are confident and we have clarity and conviction and a knowing, and we already trust and believe that what we desire is done and we feel our feelings and we slow down and we ex enjoy and experience the present moment. That's uh, where we need to go. No, no, absolutely, absolutely. But as I said, I mean, a lot of, I mean, a lot of people are, are for some reason afraid of doing that or, as you said, the, you know, the culture around us doesn't allow us to do that. Um, so how can you talk a little bit about emotional suppression? Because I do think that that's a, that's a, a critical piece and, you know, and, and control issues and how everything just keeps us blocked from doing that. Because to your point a moment ago, right, for most people, if they said to their, um, to their boss or somebody else saying, listen, I'm going to take a half an hour and I'm going to sit out the backyard because I need to think and I need to reflect and all of that. They'd be like, well, what are you doing? You have to have this. You're supposed to be doing this. You know, I'm not paying you to reflect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really appreciate that. And that's one of the reasons why I do a lot of work in uh, businesses and corporations with leadership, because our paradigm of leadership is really wrong 
it's just wrong. And when we can get, um, you know, all of our leadership in any organization to shift the paradigm and understand what real leadership is, which is not title hierarchy and authority, it is vulnerability and support and compassion and transparency uh, and enlightenment and all these other components, then we start to really change the world and allow people to go, oh, I am going to go take time off. I'm not going to answer my email at 10 p.m. at night, right? I'm going to create a healthy, holistic way of life for myself so that when I get to the last breath, which by the way, that's the only truth there is, right? No one's getting out alive and you're Mm going to have that moment and you're going to look back and you're going to feel really satiated or you're going to be feel really frustrated, right? So as leaders, it's incumbent upon us to, to really be able to shift that. But emotional suppression, you know, in my book, I talk about something called the drip process, right? Your great grandparents dripped on your grandparents, your grandparents dripped on your parents, and your parents dripped on you, their ways of being. And the those that came before us, um, it wasn't, for, for men, it was uh, vulnerability is weakness, suck it up, buttercup, don't let them see you sweat, right? And for women, it was very, very similar. And even like everyone else's needs come first. So if you do need to cry, just like go in the closet, or go cry in the bathroom, right? Don't really show that expression widely. So as a result, we grew up like not having time for our emotion. It would come right here and you would zhuzh it down. Nope, not right now, because I'm gonna go be productive, because I'm gonna go distract myself. Because we were never taught how to feel our feelings. Right, but we be here with me on this because this is everything. We were not taught how to feel our feelings, that our feelings are part of our humanness. It's it's our expression. The only thing wrong with your feelings is the fact that you judge them. Right? Yeah. No, I, I, I absolutely, and I and you're 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 so correct. I mean, is the fact that you know we're we're very much encouraged to be um to kind of operate on a certain level, right? Mm-hmm. And a, on a certain emotional level all the time. Yeah, right. And it's we we are borderline rewarded for being strong and super resilient. Like I, you know, one of the main things I teach all of my students and clients is I don't want you to be strong. I want you to be human. What does that right. look like? What does that look like, right? Um, yeah, no, e- exactly. Because I mean, I think there you go. You, you, that, that's a very kind of profound point there is what does it mean to be human? And are you a human being having a work experience or are you just a, a worker who happens to be a human? Mm-hmm. Right. And, and it's, and it's that to bring that also into the workplace. You know, before I stepped into my true like reason for being on this earth, which is what we're doing now, I spent 12 years as a VP of HR for huge healthcare corporations. I have seen it. I have been in there and every corporation lacks the human factor. Right. Yeah, and, and, yeah. and, and when, and what we're learning now through the work of great pioneers, look at the work Renee Brown is doing with vulnerability in the workplace and innovation and creativity and Simon Sinek and other big, you know, leaders that are making a real beautiful needed dent in the way that we operate. Right. We are human beings. And in fact, we are spiritual beings having a human experience and that's not woo woo. That's scientifically the truth. And when we can start to lead and supporting one another through that lens, there's a flow and an ease and a connection that occurs that then makes the ROI that every company is looking for exponentially easier. So talk to me a little bit more about the the spiritual aspect, because again, that's something that, I mean, if if you said to most people, in their job, you know, tell me about your spirituality. I mean, number one, a lot of people would confuse it with religion. Yes. But, but sec- second off, they'd be like, well, how is that relevant to my job? Mm, yes. Um, so the first thing you said is so accurate and s- profound. Spirituality is not religion. That's so just separate that out for a moment. Um, we are, whatever you believe, whether it's a source of universe of God, we come from something bigger than we are. That's your spiritual self, your higher self, the part of you that is not egoic, right? We have our spiritual way or spiritual being having a human experience and you get to play in both of those and how that benefits us in a, uh, you know, being productive and connected, especially in corporate America is 
you trust when you, you know, you know, you're supported. You're not um, so tense and frenetic. You're not chasing time, right? You're able to be spacious. You're able to know that there's something bigger than you that's guiding you. It's not woo-woo. It's not tree hugging, as a lot of people would like to say. And I get it, but your skepticism is blocking you from having a more abundant, rich, wealthy, emotional, nourished life, right? And I want to validate your skepticism because we were raised in a paradigm where it was like this, show it to me, and then I'll mm-hmm. believe it, right? When I see it, I'll believe it. So it's not your fault. It's the way in which you were influenced to think and believe. But what we're learning through uh, the the metaphysical world, through quantum physics, through universal law, through metacognition, through neuroscience, and all the other words I can use for the same thing is, you must believe it in order to see it, which Mm -hmm. requires a level of connection to your spiritual higher self in faith and trust. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I I agree. And and as I said, I mean, unfortunately, you know, the pervasive culture today is trying to make everything so, um, I guess, so earthly focused, right, if you like, I mean, so yes. focused on things and on, and instant gratification and all of that, that the, the connection to the to the spirit um, is, is, I mean, it's hard for people because uh they have all these influence around them which are telling them no 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 just here here's something that will satiate you Mm -hmm. absolutely and that's also when you recognize when you're being how do you know you're too much in your humanness right and not enough in your spirituality when you are in fear a lot you're in anxiety a lot you're nervous you're experiencing feeling a level of unworthiness um your anxiety is at all time high you're in scarcity that's just, that indicates to you, whoa, 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 I'm out of faith. I'm out of trust. I'm thinking that I'm like on this island doing this alone. That's not it at all, right? And when you go up and you go, okay, thank you. That's the indication. Let me go high. Let me go up into my spiritual self and realize I came from something bigger than me. And that thing still supports me. Even if I've been skeptical up until now, it is unwavering in its support of you. Yeah, no, absolutely. And the other the other thing that um I just wanted to touch upon is this idea of okay, so if you go on a journey like this, you know, regards whether you're a leader or whether you're doing it in, in your personal life or whatever, is that there's all these people around and there's all these people around you and you can fall into the trap of operating uh, according to their expectations or your perception rather of their expectations of you and then you just try to meet those or please those people and you're often you know denying your authentic self or you're not saying what needs to be said or whatever and and in some ways the culture also in work and stuff it's always about now people talk about you know being happy and all this kind of stuff. you know all these things that you can't really do for other people but we're told you should Mm, Right. Well, because ultimately you can only be responsible for yourself and you are not responsible for other people. However, Mm -hmm. things happen in childhood and most of us have developed an adaptive behavior or two where if I contortionist myself, everyone will be happy. If I say yes, even when I mean no, everybody will still like me. And we all, we all struggle, me included, we all have this to undo. And it's really, really important to start to identify it for ourselves because then what we end up doing is we end up living a version of everyone else's needs and desires for us and not your own true aligned, authentic experience of your own life. Yeah, and that can be, and let's face it, I mean, that can be pretty uh, daunting to begin with. I mean, if you so, if you start to realize that maybe you're out of sync, you're not living your authentic life, there may be a lot of changes that you need to make. And I guess the other part that I, I, when people go on this journey, probably the hardest part is perhaps there are people you have to separate from. Oh, absolutely. Which only makes sense, right? Sure makes sense which also requires you to access your spiritual self to have that tr- that trust and faith um because the people around you i see this a lot in the students that i serve their friends or their family get triggered by their growth right Be- mm-hmm. and it's okay everyone's journey is just as unique and valid as the next person they they're just not ready yet right and we're going to allow that you don't judge it you don't get mad at it 
And you also don't hold on to something that has had its season. It's okay right. to let that go as you expand and you rise into satiating yourself because you're either living your life for you, not from a selfish perspective, but from a true, like, you know, my opinion is the most important opinion that matters and my happiness, right? It's like, I'm willing to let you be uncomfortable so that I can make choices that feel right to me. Yeah. No, you I know? love that. I lo yeah, no, I love that. I love I'm, I'm I'm willing to make you feel uncomfortable so I can make the choices that are right for me. Um, I think that's extremely profound. And and just just to um, just to tag on to that a little bit is again just kind of I, I think we're we're fighting against a culture again that says more is more, right? More is better, right? You know, the more friends you have, the more followers you have, the more likes you have, everything is more, more, more. But the reality is that when you go on a journey like this, that, you know, sometimes it's all about reduction rather than addition. Oh, a thousand percent, because less is more. And as you change and do the, the, the purpose of our lives, which is healing, growing and expanding, that is the purpose of why we are all here, right? That is what the human experience is for. It is to do those things. Um, I totally forgot where my mind was going to go. <laughs> no, okay. I'm just saying. We're, yeah. we're, what were you just saying? Let's go back. Yeah, no, I did. I was saying we were talking about, um, you know, the fact is that, uh, you know, the culture tells you more, 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 and oh, yes. the less I, is I, more. I this mm -hmm. is what I was going to say. So, as you heal, grow, and expand, the beauty is, is that everything that you thought you wanted changes. The way that you see the world changes. What you deemed mattered to you prior no longer does because you have finally healed your wounds of unworthiness and you're no longer out to prove yourself. It's not about, oh, well, they have a boat. I need to have a boat. Well, my friend just did this. I need to do this. What do you want? What is going to satiate you? What's that true desire? Because not because of what your parents wanted or your religious leader or your coach or your neighbor or your best friend, truly allowing that to be for you. And it always becomes less because we recognize that we're the consciousness, which is kind of like, you know, next step in the conversation. Um, and we can enjoy things, but our real satiation comes from within. Yeah, oh, absolutely. So um, just to, in, in conclusion, what is, what is just one piece of advice you would give to somebody who, who to start their journey? Just, you know, because I think often what happens with, unfortunately, it's a, it's a human trait is like, oh, I want to get to here. Therefore, I'm focused totally on the on the destination. And then I'm paralyzed to take the first step because it looks so far away. First of all, thank you for saying that. That is such a huge component of what trips us up because when you are outcome focused and you're staring at that big end, whether the end goal is 50 pound weight loss, you know, a million dollars in revenue in my sales, whatever that is, as soon the way your brain works, as soon as you identify and you stare at that outcome, it starts to tripwire your fear response and it puts you into overwhelm. And it's literally as if a net comes down from the sky and smacks you on the floor and you're like, <laughs> I can't move. I, I physically cannot move, right? So we wanna stay in process, not in outcome. We wanna know what our desire is and kind of like set it and forget it, if you will, and then be present in the moment. That was just me addressing that comment because it was so accurate yeah. and grateful because our, your listeners, like that was a really important, you guys. The first, there's two steps. The first step is recognizing being honest with yourself about what you desire and why you don't have it. That's, that's step one, right? Really going, okay, so I keep saying I want to 10X my sales mm -hmm. and it keeps not happening. Great. And you must do this through non-judgment. It is unhelpful if you let your mind go, well, you suck and you're never going to make it. That, that, okay. And then you simply identify and write it down. Put on the right side. What I want is 10X in sales. Why don't I have it? What's stopping me? And put pen to paper. Get it out of your head. You can't, uh, it was Einstein who said he can't solve problems with the same mind that created the problems, right? Get it out on paper to look at the truth. Like, oh my God, I'm afraid to be visible. I'm afraid to ask for the sale. Oh my God, I, I don't actually believe in what I'm selling. I don't believe in myself. Whoa, that's what we're looking for. That's the growth gold. 
That's what I teach as the honesty behind the honesty. Mm. You're not going to get anywhere by rationalizing and justifying yourself, right? And then start to grow your awareness. That's step two. You have to start to cultivate that knowing, the noticing, the slowing down. You can do that through a, a, a series of breathing and other, other, um, other practices. But first, what do I want? Why don't I have it? And then slow down and start to observe yourself. Yeah, listen, the fantastic. I think those are two two very profound but very achievable things that people can can uh, can start to look at today. Uh, I you know, couldn't agree more. Is like look at look at the the truth about what you you really want and sort of set aside all the expectations of others or the expectations you put up upon yourself that may not belong to you. And then, as we said, is slow down, take some time, be with yourself, uh, yeah. and 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 be. And be okay with being with yourself. Absolutely, because that opens you up to the underpinning of everything, which is a journey of unconditionally loving and accepting yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah, absolutely. No, this this has been fantastic. Listen, thank you so much, Tracy, for sharing all of this wisdom with us today. Um, all of Tracy's information is going to be below this video, um, all the links. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself. Oh, yes. So uh, I live in Palm Beach, Florida. I am a mother to three teenage daughters. God bless me. Uh, <laughs> I, I have an amazing husband who I often say is the great man behind the great woman. And I really am appreciative of that. Uh, and I wake up every day to remind uh, leaders and entrepreneurs who they are and what they're capable of. You know, as a mind mindset teacher and spiritual advisor, this is the reason that I was put on this planet. And I'm deeply, deeply grateful. Yeah, this, this is great. And to be honest, I'm very timely because I think, as you said, I mean, I think we've reached a, almost a crisis point now. And I think people need to to start to do things a little bit differently um, if we're going to if we're going to flourish as a, um, rather than continue to just like like lemmings run off a cliff. Mm -hmm. So, so, yeah. So thanks, Tracy. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner, CRM. I will see you all for another interview soon. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.